happy with your choice? I think it looks fun. Well, it's not my choice. Huh? Let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's be clear about that. It's like a children's house. <laughs> you guys are building a circus. <laughs> looks like it. Welcome to a new Project Camp update. In previous updates, you saw us turning this big trailer into a house. We put up the walls, the floor, and it also has a roof. And in this update, we're gonna fill in the walls with this recycled textile and cover the walls with these panels. We made a design and we asked the people to vote for it. And the vote has been made. So today we're gonna build whatever the vote wants. And that is kind of scary. Thank you, teacher. Plus, this week we had some challenges with our off-grid electricity. And we solved another common problem, which you might have as well. So stay with us until the end. So we received a call, they dropped off the insulation for the trailer and we're gonna bring it down and leave it inside of the big trailer. One. Okay, we are gonna work in the inside of the big trailer first. We are going to isolate it with recycled textile and put a vape barrier on. We are still waiting on the materials for the roof. Uh, no bueno, because it's raining a lot. Water everywhere. So we have some leaks and it's not really good for the roof. Meanwhile, we're gonna start putting the electric boxes in where the switches and the uh, plugs are coming. What? So this is like the socket that the plug goes into it. What Jaime is doing now, that he's putting them on the walls where they're supposed to go. But now, nothing can hold them. So he screws them in the panels. And once the insulation is going to be around it, carrying it, then we can take the nails out. And then after, we press the holes, and this is where the cables are coming from. So the whole system is going to be designed between the two layers of insulation. We're going to show you that. We have the boxes in place. Right there, and right now Colleen just marked all the points where I have to drill holes to run all the cables. So we made all the holes for the electric cables and now we're going to put the first layer of insulation. So it's going to be first layer, cable, second layer. But today we can only do the first one. This is a kind of a fabric, textile, compressed thingy insulation. And that's what we're going to use. Let's go! Let's go! Video making team working. Yeah. Uh, so right now we can start pulling the cables through all the switches, sockets, and everything. We're using this cable, it has a metal cover and a rubber cover. So yeah, we're only using the cable. Uh, I know we should use electric pipes, but it's a lot of plastic that we don't want to use. So yeah, we're gonna start running cables through the whole trailer. I don't know what a medium is. This is where the fuse box is gonna be, next to the door. So all the cables are going to be connected to this. We have two rooms, so we divided it into cables are going through. The cable runs through, always at 50 centimeter. Then we don't drill in it during the leaving. Then you have the split boxes. Because you don't want all the cables to be connected to the fuse box, because it's too much cable, 
you use split boxes. So you put them strategically where you want to spread out in the more efficient way the cables. So you have also these very simple cables that connect to the sockets and then you have a plug and it's crazy magical. That's uh, how it's done. Cool, cool. So we ran all the wires and now we're gonna start connecting all the cables in the split boxes. Uh, we're using these connectors. We have a knife. So connecting them is pretty simple. We have these connections, waggle. We just open up the clips and we put all the colors together. Oh, all the way around. And, and we close the clip. And we do the same with all the colors. All the cables are in, uh, so now the last part is to put the second layer of uh, insulation and then we are gonna put down the tarp and seal it on the floor, insulation and tarp. That's the mission for today. As you see, we're creating a big hot box. <laughs> we're putting this black tarp that is called anti-vapor. Vapor, vapor mean, barrier. Vapor barrier. That means that the vapor cannot come in the insulation, which is good. And here, we opened it with the window. And now they're sealing it with some tape on the edges, so it's nice and sharp. By the way, this is really... Uh, We finished the vapor barrier and, well, the biggest part of the interior. You can show everybody. <laughs> Everything is sealed. So as you can see, the walls are meeting the roof here, but there is a little gap left by the beams. So in order to have our house completely isolated, we need to fill these gaps. So we're gonna make little bags that looks a bit like this. And we're just gonna stuff them inside of this. And uh, we cut a piece of tarp, leftover tarp from our insulation. Leftover insulation, shred. And then we're gonna place them and make a little roll. And there you have it, your homemade cushion insulated. After insulating the whole box, the big trailer is starting to look and feel more like a house. The temperature inside is now stable, and the walls are ready to receive the final layer. Now it's time to work on the outside. Wait a second, because we want to introduce our sponsor for this video, and that's Milanote. Ok, so what's Milanote? It's a tool to work on creative projects. In our case, building a house on a big trailer might be a bit more technical. But you could also say it serves to organize projects in a creative way. So this fits quite well with the variety of skills we have in Project Camp, because you have a lot of templates to start with depending on your profession or the project you're doing. You can tailor it to your needs blending many inputs, like text, images, videos, color swatches, whatever. Then you put it on boards or you can organize it with columns. And yeah, it's definitely very easy and flexible. 
this flexibility allows different approaches to work with it. For example, we asked Ingrid for some inspiration inputs and she loves mood boards. So, she made a mood board. Here we have it. Or wait, I'm gonna drop a comment here. Okay, another way we can use it. Let's say Dave wants to discuss where to place the pick trailer. So he creates a port, drops a mat there and we can discuss on it. Or maybe you prefer it in a more traditional way. Okay. You can leave a bunch of to-do lists and links, but they will look much better than if you do it in another place. You can even watch the videos, or you can just drop a file there and then somebody else can grab it. Yeah, very versatile. Another cool thing is the web clipper. Let's say you want to build a shed for the pig trailer. So you go online for some inspiration and using the web clipper can get any picture, link or video. And boom. You already have it in Milanote. Then you can invite other people to edit this board or the whole thing. Or if you want external feedback, you can also send a read only link that you can customize, allowing comments, downloads, setting up a welcome message or even a password for security. At the end, many ways to collaborate just by sharing a link. So, Milanote is a cool tool and it's available for free with no time limit. You can check it out in the link in the description and start to organize your projects in a different way. Yeah, so that was our sponsor for this video. Now we are getting closer to get a tractor or a digger. Still deciding, you can find more in our research topic. And as we said, we would get one of them with four advertisings. We have made three so far, so there's only one to go. And now we're gonna jump into the pig trailer again. In previous updates, we found some HPL panels in the scrap yard. So this probably will be the shell of our pig trailer. We have different sizes, different colors. As you can see, they are quite bright colors. Blue, green, pink and orange. But we couldn't decide on which colors and how to combine them. So we thought it would be a cool idea to get some help. We proposed a bunch of different layouts for our patrons to vote and they did it. So here we are back in a scrapyard. After the vote in Patreon, Patreon choose 25% of each color. So we will get all this HPLA high pressure laminate with some phenolic uh, layer. It's good to be outside and to protect from the weather. It's actually coming from all the stands from fairs that this guy collected here. So thanks to Patreon, we will have a very characteristic trailer. It's a bit heavy. A bit. <laughs> Let's see if uh, the pickups <laughs> can the arrive back to project camp. <laughs> How are the tires? Not good. We have to pump them up. Little challenge here. <laughs> we'll make it. Okay, so we have the material here, the uh, high pressed laminate, and right now we have to prep it. So we have to cut it to size, drill holes, and then uh, fit it in. First, we have to clean everything because it's disgusting right now. And yeah, Colleen and me came up with a really cool system, but we already started it. We thought all the spaces were even the same size but when we went to fit the first piece in it wasn't so we make uh, we made a incredible list of all the colors and all the different sizes and cuts so yeah right now we're gonna clean all the pieces cut all the pieces to size and then put them in so yeah let's start After measuring and cleaning the HPL, it's time to cut. Now we are drilling the hole. For that, we made a mold. Typical. 
Finally, time to start paneling. Let's see how this is gonna look like. Colleen, 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 hola! Who knows, eh? It's okay. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. I think it's broken. We need pre drill because we don't want to break the button. And then. Ah, wait, that's a good one. We wanted to experiment. Those screws that we are using are stainless steel. So they are for outside, they don't rust. So one side is going to be with stainless steel screws, and the other side is going to be with normal screws. So that we can see what happens. So if you have a doubt, always lean on that side of the wall. Dave and Rita were some days off, and this is their first reaction. Mariona! I'm trying to get a reaction. Yes. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> it's not clean yet, huh? Hmm? It's half clean. There's a camera recording. I didn't see it. <laughs> Happy with your choice? I think it looks fun. Well, it's not my choice. Huh? Let's, let's, <laughs> okay, let's be clear about that. <laughs> it's Recycle Village. It's Recycle Village. It's like a children's house. <laughs> I would have gone for blue or green only. I like the one well, with you should the have told us, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I said, <laughs> and I voted for it. You guys are building a circus. <laughs> Looks like it. Yeah, it's like some kid took too much sugar or Okay, finished two sides and uh, two more to go. The two more to go are a bit more tricky, but the energy is there. It's there. Let's go. Let's go. Why is it tricky? It's just a matter of uh, sliding things through, really. Through where? Through. <laughs> so you see, like there is a metal beam here with the our thing that protects it from the sun, and we like the shade, so we want to keep it. So you need to. What do we need to do? Put the planks. How is it? Like how? When a video maker joins workspace. <laughs> natural builder. A natural builder. Huh? A natural builder. Paneling is done. So now we can properly see how this turned out. I would say quite unique. Probably the only in the world that looks like this. It used to look like this. This is what Patreon bought for. And now it looks like this. Interesting choice. The goal was to reuse materials. But we only had four bright colors to choose from. Let's see if the people like it. I'm fine. No. Mm. Um. They're very interesting. Yeah, they make me happy. Yes. Cool! Let us know what you think. Okay, patrons, so this is it. We hope you don't regret the beautiful art piece we got over here. And next we're gonna make it the uh, roof waterproof. This time, really waterproof. But first, we need to do another upgrade. With some cloudy and rainy days coming, we are running out of electricity. This means that we cannot use many power tools. 
We need to improve this situation so we can work with many people in cloudy days again. In Project Camp, we live mainly off-grid. These six solar panels are holding us since season one. So far, it has been working kind of good. Sometimes we are a bit tight depending on the weather and the amount of people in the camp. But these seasons, since we increased the amount of projects and people living here, it became just not enough, even in sunny days and especially in cloudy days. We already mentioned in previous challenges videos and after some checking and research we decided to double our number of panels to increase our solar production, especially in cloudy days. We don't think we need to increase our battery capacity for the moment. We just need to charge them faster when there's not much sunlight. As a temporary solution, we decided to install it on top of our recycled plastic roof. We know it's not the best angle, we know it's not the best structure to hold it, but in the meantime, while we think on a proper solution, we need already to use them. So we will go with this. First step is to put the frame on our roof and on top the solar panels. For that we have the help of Colleen and Julianne. And later on we will install all the connections to hook it to our current system. But first, meet Colleen. Hello, I'm Colleen. I'm from France and I came last season to help with the repairing of the sketchy ruin. Now I'm back to keep learning about construction. I want to learn how to do everything I need to live. Starting with the house! You could say that I'm preparing myself to leave the system one brick at a time. Getting knowledge about making and repairing and making that knowledge accessible is what I plan to do all my life. No better place than here to do so. On the long run, I would like to get deeper into natural building. I really love mud. It's like I was born in a swamp. Much like Shrek, with whom I identify strongly. We're gonna do the solar panel on the roof today, but our roof is a bit too small, so we want to extend it. We have here some wood from last year that we used for the roof, but finally, in the end, we chose to exchange it from some thinner thing. Anyway, we have some leftovers, so we're going to use this. And it's red cedar. It goes well for a long run in the rain. It's cool. It's nice. So we're going to use this. And uh, let's go follow me. Since it is a temporary setup, we don't want to screw them on the plastic sheets or damage the actual structure. So we are going to add some pieces of wood to the actual setup where we can screw the frame. For the frame that keeps the panels together, we will use an aluminium profile in order to avoid as much weight as we can on top of our roof. For the old setup, we have made a metal frame, but this would be too heavy for our recycled plastic roof. So these are the solar panels we are going to install. They are slightly bigger than the ones we had before. Before we had 470 watt panels. Now we go for slightly bigger, 550 watt. They are also slightly bigger, but still will fit in our roof. We are a bit afraid that the roof can collapse with the solar panels and with us on top. So we are going to use this. Safety first. Now we are gonna place one female down, one male up. We are gonna paste it with duct tape. So then when we put it up, the cables are in the right place already. It was could be difficult to find the cable, connect them, because we cannot really work underneath the panel. 
Ya. They're all aligned ah. and hopefully we also solve the leaks with this problems. So the first one is here. No. Go for the last two. We're killing it. What's the problem? It doesn't fit. We need to move again a bit. Oh. Two millimeters. <laughs> so the solar panels are already up. Still not harvesting energy. Next step would be to connect it to our current system. Let's go! Let's do it! Okay, so solar panels are already in place and now it's time to hook them to our actual system. Our current system was set up by Dave in season one. In order to increase our solar production capacity, we also need to add some new elements. And for this, we would need to add a new board on top to keep it tidy and nice. Let me show you what we have now. So here we have our, our new components. We have a new solar regulator, a new fuse box for the solar panels with the fuses inside. We have uh, another fuse here. And we have all the cables to make all the connections and put everything together. So I also made a simple diagram that integrates the old system and the new system and all the wiring needed. So now what I'm gonna do is to mount as much as I can in the workspace in the new board in order to facilitate later the connections there and the working in the back of the wall. So as much as I can it's gonna happen here and the rest will happen in the electricity box. So now what I'm going to do is to pick the cables of the solar panels we already connect to bring them to our solar box. We asked the shop to already crimp our solar cables because they have a specific connection and we don't have the tools to do it here. Now we already have it. We just need to plug the cables into the panels. So now we made already the holes, we're going to bring cable from up here to inside our box. I'm gonna cover these ventilation holes with the cardboard in order to protect it from the dust so the dust doesn't go in the batteries. Now we are gonna mount a new fuse. Uh, 80 amp fuse that will protect our solar positive before it gets into the system. The last piece in. I also have some help for someone with long arms. We have here a volunteer. Hey Dave. Hey. So now I'm gonna turn everything off. First soda, then the inverter, and the batteries. We're gonna disconnect the battery, disconnect some cables we have. We need to make bigger holes here too. That's sketchy. So we have disconnected all the electricity of the camp. Everyone is having dinner with not much light. 
So now I'm gonna reconnect everything again. So then we have electricity and we can continue our lives. This time turn on everything, see if it works. All good. Now these up. You want to harvest energy? So we already finished to connect everything. We have the solar panels in place, the wiring here. All seems that is working properly. Today is not a super sunny day, but we finally can use our kettle, our washing machine, and whatever we want. It's technically how it would be everyday sunny here. Solar panels are in place, they work very good. We have way more electricity every day. We don't have limitations anymore. Even in cloudy days, we can use as much electricity as we want. Ready for more people, ready for more projects and ready for winter. In the end, we also clean the solar panels from the dirt. And we noticed that our towels are tearing apart. Hi, Julie, what are you doing here? Hey, I'm uh, actually drying the cutlery, but yeah, this towel is a bit broken, I would say. This happens often. We have many broken towels. Ah. So how can we do to fix the towel? Do we like throw it away or we try to fix it? Uh, preferably fixing it, but personally, I wouldn't know how to do it. Oh, then we can try. That would be great. So we have some pretty broken kitchen towel here and we have the sewing machine so we are now trying to repair those and we have this one is quite damaged so we will use this as the batches to repair those towels and we will start with this one we will cut this fabric into a little square then we will try to sew this patch onto this This one is the first two patches I've done with and I was not very happy about it as you can see it is still quite raw here and you can still see the edges here that is easily to be peeled off so I think of another method that I look into the sewing machine I see that there are, there are different uh, stitches here so I change it into the zigzag stage so uh, the edges can be uh, securely locked it here and then also I do uh, another stitch around the holes here and hopefully the kitchen towel can last longer and I will cut a small square like this Okay, so we got a patch here and then we'll then sew it onto the hole. Then we'll turn it into an other side and then use the zigzag stitch to lock the little holes here. Okay, so I'm now finished with one patch. And more patches to go.
So this is how I try to repair the kitchen towel uh, with the sewing machine. But if you have any other ideas, you do it at home or how can we do this without using a machine, feel free to share with us. So we got a colorful pig trailer, very close to being a home or a disco. We don't know what we are going for yet. And we also have the solar panels ready installed on the roof so we can achieve all the cloudy days with some electricity. And the towels are fixed. Quite a lot of things being done. Next week we will be preparing ourselves for the rain that is coming because we are close to winter time. We will also be working on a lake that we were trying to make. Not sure how that is gonna go but let's see. So if you want to see that episode already ahead, you can support us on Patreon and see this episode even without ads. And if not, we see you here on YouTube, same channel, same time. Alright, have a nice week!